and then DC jumped onto it, killed Superman, for God's sakes, you know, and, and it's like, we got all the blame, but they're the ones who did it. We were, we were a little bit ahead of this thing that's happening right now on TV in Hollywood. The Image Boys had slayed the dragon. Seven artists left Marvel and went on their own and had climbed above DC as the number two publisher in comics for a month. Lost among the huge crowds, huge sales numbers, and instant success were cracks forming between the founders and throughout the comics industry. We, we started Image in 92 and the, the bust really started like a year and a half, year, year and a half later and things started sliding. I thought it was gonna last you know, three years. Jim said, well, I think we should start thinking about, you know, alternatives within you know, two years. <laughs> you know, like what's, what's going to happen when it all comes down? Comics had hit all-time highs. The collectibles market, living off nostalgia for times past, had now moved on to comics. This made the price of Golden Age books like Action Comics number 1 skyrocket. Collectors then started snatching up any number one issues they could get their hands on in hopes of striking gold. Speculators no longer had trading cards. They were looking for something else. So more, and image hit. The numbers went through the roof. People were buying boxes of those comics, you know, to maybe fund their college education for their kids. It didn't work out that way, unfortunately. But we weren't going to say no. The problem is, those Golden and Silver Age books are valuable because they're rare. Spawn number one sold two million copies. The definition of not rare. So what happened? This false bubble from speculators hoping for easy money soon popped. By 1996, nine out of 10 comic book stores in America had closed their doors. Sales for the entire comic book industry cratered and Marvel Comics went bankrupt. We got blamed for it, but actually it was started by Marvel. You know, back when we were at Marvel, it started there. Five variant covers. And yeah, all, all that, that kind of you know, ridiculous stuff. And then DC jumped onto it, killed Superman, for God's sakes, you know? And, and it's like, we got all the blame, but they're the ones who did it. The big one that doesn't get thrown into the equation at all was the return of Superman. Nobody gave a rat's ass about the return of Superman. They had 50 years of comic books with Superman in them already. You know, I think I had a different perspective than they did. I started getting worried pretty early on because about a year into it, books were starting to ship kind of late, you know, things. There, there were, that was a big criticism of Image in the early days. Personally, I wish I had drawn more stuff at that time. Um, I think we could kind of, I think the, the crash was imminent regardless because even if we um, helped contribute to it, everyone was going through the sales sure. you know, frenzy and um, there just weren't enough readers to sustain that kind of rapid growth and uh, both the number of stores and the number of comics that were being printed. But at the same time, I think we could have done a much better job of you know, um, producing books more on time. As problems mounted for the comics industry, so did the infighting at Image. The bond between the partners started to come apart. The reverse of the early Image was happening. So I think that caused a lot of stress and I think that's what you know, when Jim says the Brotherhood would, should have lasted longer, I think the contracting marketplace uh, affecting all of our businesses was just, it was making it too hard for us to still be that, uh, the Brotherhood, you know, the fraternity um, that was at the beginning. Then Lee and Liefeld did something totally unexpected. They returned to the House of Ideas. The original idea was for all the image partners to come in and do something at, at, at Marvel. And a lot of people, uh, everyone else was not interested, uh, only, uh, only Todd and my, or Rob and myself. And so we flew out to meet with, with uh, the people at Marvel at the, at the time. And this was at a sort of top executive level. And so it wasn't even handled through normal editorial. And I think that kind of appealed to Rob and myself. And they said, these characters are broken in our opinion. They don't sell well. What if we did a deal where you took these characters and reinvigorated them however you see fit? So Rob and I basically said, I, I like this guy. Or you take this guy. I'll take this guy. It was like a fantasy football draft. It did not go over well with everyone at Image. When did you think that first era of Image ended? When Jim and uh, Rob went back to Marvel to do Heroes Reborn? When Jim and Rob did that, they were still partners at, um, at Image. So I, I, wouldn't, 
I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that was it. For me personally, I, I think it was a move in the direction. Everything changed. Uh, and anyone who tells you different is just lying. And, and, the, and the timeline, I just tell everybody, go back and look at the timeline. It all plays out. Uh, when that happened, things got super ugly and uh, nobody, any, any problems that we all had with each other were not hidden anymore. Things got so bad, Silvestri actually left Image after accusing Liefeld of trying to poach artists from Top Cow Studios for Liefeld's own Extreme Studios. Your position on, on what happened with uh, Michael Turner, who was yep. an artist for Top Cow, yep. uh, he was upset that you apparently made overtures to him to, to work for you. I'd like to get your take on that. Mike wanted to do more work and wanted to expand what he was doing beyond what he was doing under Mark. And we agreed to a three-issue project with him which is great, we love Mike's work. Uh, at this time, my inker for five, four years was now inking Spawn, and he was supposed to be exclusive to me. But you can talk to Danny Mickey, and you can, he'll say, no, Rob didn't freak out. He just said, dude, you're, if you're gonna do that with Todd, then you're not exclusive to me anymore, and I let you go, it's fine. That was the extent of our talk. People were grabbing other people's talent by this time. It was a very, very difficult time, particularly for me, um, but, we had taken an, we, we had set up a thing where a partner could be voted out if what he did was so egregious that it hurt the body politic. So the image partners took to a vote to see if Liefeld would be allowed to stay. I will say, to set the record straight once and for all, because Rob has always countered that he left, which is true, he did. So the way it would happen is that it had to be a unanimous vote, save for the, the partner in question. And then a cooling off period of no less than one month, and then another unanimous vote. Mark had quit by this point. We were about to take the second vote. We had all met at our attorney's office. And a fax came over and Rob quit. And the attorney said, don't vote. You cannot vote him at this point. He's already quit, he's already out. I'm not sure what the legality was of that, but he advised us not to do it. Us being us, we did it anyways. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Rob are fine now. <laughs> yeah, no. I never finished answering that question. I mean, it took a few, it took a few so years. So let's clarify that. Yeah, let's you clarify and Rob that. Are fine now. We were all crazy back then. And we were all, at a certain point when the market crashed, we were all kind of desperate to keep our businesses intact. Um, and sometimes it meant doing things probably would never normally do. Image had lost Liefeld, who had come up with the idea for the company, the guy who designed the logo. But Image hadn't hit rock bottom yet. That would come in 1998, when Jim Lee sold his Wildstorm studio to DC Comics. Jim leaving was definitely a concern. Um, Jim was the biggest market share within Image, within uh, all the partners. Jim's uh, studio, Wildstorm, was the biggest. It's, it had the most books and had the biggest market share. While the comics industry was on life support, Image's characters were actually thriving in other mediums. In 1994, the Wildcats animated series debuted. A Savage Dragon animated show would also make its way to television. And the light. Now we have a fighting chance. Now we have the dragon. But Spawn was the company's biggest multimedia hero. In 1997, the feature film based on the character opened in theaters and was a surprise hit. You sent me to hell, Jason. I'm here to return the favor. We were ahead of the superhero curve, right? So the you know the final execution and the content in that 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 can be debated on another level. That that's sort of a separate conversation. Looking back on it. I how proud are you of, of, of that film, that you got it off the ground and they got it to a point where it became, you know, a, a box office success? I, 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 I'd, I'd call it, it, for what it was at the time, I'd call it a solid double, right? I mean, I'm a baseball Excellent guy. Excellent baseball I'm a baseball guy. So, again, was it a home run? No. You know, it was, it was a double. It wasn't a single. It was a double. Don't you piss me off by trying that crap with me. Ask most Spawn fans, and they'll tell you HBO's animated series based on McFarlane's creation was a grand slam. Why is it that people with authority abuse their power? Oh, 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 oh. Ah! 
how satisfying was it the way that animated series captured your creation? There are very few times where you go, wow, we hit the top of, of the mountain. And Keith David's voice in the HBO animated series, it was perfect. I mean, I, I, I can't say that about a lot of decisions I've made in my life. I've made a lot of imperfect decisions. His was perfect. During a time when comic books were still Hollywood's bastard stepchild, Image kept breaking new ground. Silvestri's Witchblade TV series adaptation debuted on TNT in 2000 to record ratings. You know, we did Witchblade, the live action TV series, 17 years ago. And I, I think people kind of forget that we were not Marvel, not DC, uh, plus it was a female-led comic book character that we managed to get on television on TNT. Um, I look back and go, I still think, how the hell did we do that? I don't remember TNT pushing the based on a comic book angle either. They didn't. That's how different a time yeah. that was. You're right. That was, actually a that was a detriment, you know, because comic books back then were comic books. Speaking of the actual comics, how does Image survive without Lee and Liefeld and their creative strength and contributions? So the company fell into a financial disarray with Jim and Rob being gone because they published the majority of books that we were publishing at the time. Valentino had a plan. In 1999, he became publisher of Image. Well, Jim Valentino, I don't think, gets enough credit when he became publisher uh, to bring in things that were not spandex-oriented that were not necessarily superhero-oriented. I, I, I really think that that was kind of a pivotal moment for, for, for the company when, when Jim was publisher, because he did. He, he kind of changed the direction of things. Anything goes. And as long as it's good and unique, we will consider publishing it. So there's no house style, there's no superhero thing that you have to abide by these guidelines. I don't think Image could be what it is today if, if, if Valentino hadn't taken those steps. And, and I actually think Powers was a huge part of that. Powers was created by Michael Emming and a then unknown Brian Bendis, who would go on to write almost every Marvel book imaginable and create Jessica Jones, among many other characters. Powers was a key mile marker in Image's journey back from comics purgatory. They ran these weekly strips for Powers in there, and, and that was where it kind of caught my eye. And I was like, whoa, this is, this is coming out from Image. I want to check this out. And I was really, really excited about, about Powers. And uh, I loved Michael Emming's art. Uh, I thought Brian was doing something totally different from anybody else in comics in terms of how he approached character and dialogue. In retrospect, I must say, I'm very proud that I was part of Jim's initial uh, uh, selections because what those selections ended up being was really the template of what Image Comics became. Like, there was an image before Jim did this, and then there was what Image became. Image had lost two founders. But the next chapter in its story was just getting underway. Some eager comics nerd from Kentucky is about to pitch Valentino a certain black and white zombie comic. 